Hello, I'm Robert, founder of Doomsday Debunked. And 2010GD37, which is an asteroid that some of you have been scared of, it's been removed from the risk list. It was never, it was never, it was always a no hazard asteroid. The, all the news about saying that it risked hitting Earth was fake news. And the, they only had a, a day or so of observation and uh, it turned out, as soon as they got new data about it, they found out that it is now a main belt asteroid. And as you can see, there's Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, and then you get the asteroid belt, and then you get Jupiter. And it just turned out to be one of the, just an ordinary asteroid belt asteroid. Uh, but they had such a, a very small one uh, compared with many of the asteroids there. They only had a little bit of, uh, I think it was a day or so of data, if I remember right. And so wherever they detected it, they just didn't have enough data when they spotted it to know where it was going to go around like that, which is what they found it does do, or like that, or like that. And, uh, and they spotted it, this is in opposition, so it turned out that it was actually... Uh, so this is quite lucky, really, because it could have been... It, the, uh, their best guess before this was that it was, would be the opposite side of the sun, and we wouldn't have discovered about it for ages. And they knew so little about it that it could be anywhere from there to there and, and further. Uh, so they, it just so happened, rather luckily, that because we're coming up to... Uh, that they just happened to be coming up to opposition and easiest to spot uh, uh, at, at the time... Uh, soon before this 28th thing, so so we now know that that's where it is. At least I, I assume that I can't find actually for some reason they don't seem to have. I, I can't I can't find actually any information about it. It's, it's not very interesting for NASA. I mean they never thought that it was going to be a risk at all, so they haven't got done an announcement about it. And uh, but they just they just quietly removed it from the database because it's no longer a risk, and then JPL has published an updated, and this is uh, not very interesting, it's never been of any interest to us, to astronomers, it's just one of, another one of these one kilometre objects, they often remove them, and the, the brief, uh, this is the, la the last one left, and they've now removed this, and there's only, the only one left after this is 1950 TA, which is very far future, 1950 TA, um, 2880. That's the only other one kilometre one, and they've got Bennu, which is 2175, you know, over, well over a century into the future. There's Apophis is next in the list, and that's no hazard. And, and a few others that are uh, some of them very small, they're all no hazard. That's very really tiny, that's just going to burn up as a bright fireball if it does hit that very remote possibility. So, uh, and, and I'm just going to. I've, I've updated how how this. I've made the form a little bit clearer. This is my interface into the very techy numbers that you get go if you go to the NASA page, which people just tell me it can't make sense of. So uh, I, I mean, for instance, NASA page, they've got this number where I've got no hazard there. They just have a number zero, and the label Torino scale at the top. Zero means no hazard. So all I've done is replace the zeros in that table by the words no hazard. That's all I've done, but it makes it much more user-friendly. So, anyway, 201 on GT37, and I've also done the search for object, and if you search for it, it does it does them both at once. You don't have a unified search on the NASA website, or the Center for Near-Earth Object Studies. If you don't find it in the main thing, you have to go to a separate page to search for the removed object. I've got them both combined together in a single form there. And so you just enter its name, you click search, and it tells you it was removed. And I've made this a bit clearer what this means. This means it can't hit Earth in the next century. And you can find out more information. Actually, it can't hit Earth for millions of years in an orbit like that. So now, um, I'm just going to switch off or to go to two. And if I do a, just remove the end of that, then this is what happens now in the form. I've made it rather clearer. If they, if they don't find it, so the sensationalist pest, they often run stories about asteroids that were never any concern. They weren't even in the risk list or the centric database at all. They weren't being tracked. 
as they are being tracked as asteroids, but they were of no interest at all. They are not near-Earth objects. They have no interest at all for any hazard to Earth for the next century. And this is an example I just quite easy to get, but I just moved the seven, so I just that's the only reason I chose that one. And um, so this is an example. It's not found in the centre database or a moved object, so it can't hit Earth. So if you ever saw a story about 201 of GT3, it can't hit Earth. This, um, so now you might wonder if you've entered the name correctly. So just to make sure you've got the name correctly, you can just go and click through here. If you know you've got the name right, then you don't need to do this. If you click through to the page at ESA, but if it's just some main belt asteroid, it's not going to be there. You can try searching all asteroids, but it's not likely to find them if it's just normally main belt asteroid. I mean, the sensationalist pest, they've claimed that Vesta and even Ceres, the two large, those are the two largest asteroids in the asteroid belt, and they've claimed those were hazard to Earth. So you, you do quite often get main belt asteroids, and you get other ones that come close to Earth but are completely harmless. So if for that, then you go and click here on the um, JPL page. All you want to do is to check that it exists as an asteroid. And there you are, 2010 GD3 is indeed an asteroid. And this one is actually a main belt asteroid. And wait a minute, you'll see where it is. This 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 uh, this is um, is not actually one that they did a alert about. Like, I, you, well, let's search Vesta. They did an alert about Vesta, and so suppose you entered Vesta. Now um, we've got to auto complete. The reason I switched that off is um, was to do that GT three because it was completed to GT thirty seven. So the object Vesta was not found in central place or a removed object. This means it can't hit Earth as uh, anyone who knows much about asteroids would, would know that already. You click through to its page, and you should find it there, and you, it finds it as an asteroid. It's the second largest asteroid in the asteroid belt. So this is one that there was a sensation, a Daily Express story about. And as you can see, there's absolutely no possibility of that hitting Earth for billions of years into the future. So, uh, so that's how you do that. And then um, if you were to say something like, uh, there was some, say if they just give you some garbage name like, you know, A, B, 1, 5, 3, 2, 3, 3, or something, some silly name, then it'll say it can't hit Earth, but if you go and click through to JPL, then it will tell you that um, A, D, 15, D, 2, D, 3 doesn't exist. They do, they do produce some really strange names. So if, if, if that happens, then it's just a made up name. They do that sometimes. They just make up a name and run a story about it. It, it, it isn't even an asteroid, it's just made up by some journalist. So uh, I think that's the main thing here. But the main thing is, if you just go up here and you just you don't need to do any of this stuff to check an asteroid, even at 201 or GT37, when the sensationalist press were writing or doing all these stories about it, if you've just gone here and it says no asteroid or comet warnings, it means all those tracked, I and mean, of course there could be, there can be especially small asteroids can hit us without being tracked, but they are very, um, they are really very low risk on a personal level. And this is saying that all the ones that are tracked are harmless, and this means they're all, as, they're all the ones tracked are no hazard at this point. This could turn to being of interest to astronomers, and the so if we look at the Torino scale, then these are the possibilities there. It could say that it's reached normal. This happens once or twice a year. It could say it's meriting attention by astronomers, and it's only when it gets up to five, when you start getting threatening. If it if it gets to that point, then it means that you are going to it's going to be in the news. There's no doubt about it. Turn on your mainstream TV news probably for these as well, and there'll be um, clever people who know all about asteroids telling you all about it. And if it's 8, 9 or 10, then it's going to be, uh, that means it's certain to hit, but that still doesn't mean that it's anything to be scared of. At 8 especially, that's, uh, uh, that's just localised destruction, and the average, average between once every 50 years, once every 1,000 years, and these, these sort of collisions if it if it fell into the middle of the Pacific, or uh, which is the most likely place to go, or the middle of the Atlantic, it's just going to be a splosh. 
and nobody's going to be hurt. You're just going to get people coming and and uh, chartering jets to go and watch it from the air. It'd be quite a spectacle. And same if it's in a desert or remote area. And so we are quite lucky to get one of those because it's every 50 to 1,000 years. And, you, you know, uh, that means that we may well get one this century, like we got for Chelyabinsk, which uh, was hardly, uh, it didn't even create much of a crater, just a little hole in some ice. But uh, it, it did knock out windows and break windows, so that sort of thing certainly is possible. The, uh, if the very remote chance, so we've had thousands of years uh, of recorded history and we haven't had a big asteroid hit a city. We've had a very small asteroid hit a hamlet in in uh, Mexico last century. We had nobody has died of, and a few people died there sadly, uh, nobody has died of an asteroid in the last century and all the century before in, in the United States. It is very, very rare. Three reindeer herders were killed in the um, in Siberia in 1908. Well, this means that if we have one of these and we've detected it in advance, and it's predicted, then we could have saved the lives of those three reindeer actors. We could have saved the lives of those 14 people who died in Mexico. So uh, so that is what happens. They, they, even if they can't deflect it, they could say, get out of that hamlet, it's headed your way. And uh, But it's very unlikely that we... Either, and so as we find smaller and smaller objects, then we can get down to the size where, it, at the moment, then we're going to miss even the one that hit in Tunguska. We could possibly miss that one, and um, the, it'd be even right up to the hit if it approaches from the direction of the sun, or close to the sun in the sky. But as we find out more and more, then it's going to get. Uh, then. Uh, as, as we're building lots of telescopes are going to be built in the early 2020s that are going to completely really expand our search and then uh, in the, uh, we could put space telescopes they don't cost that much nowadays tens of millions we're talking about and think about the price of a destroyer or something I mean we spent so much money on defending Earth against uh, uh, other people on Earth and we spent almost nothing on defending it against asteroids we have these big telescopes that are looking for them. If we could put a few tens of millions into space, and we would be able to, uh, any, any, even a small country could do that. In Bangladesh could do that if they wanted to. Any, any country could do that, and even a, a wealthy billionaire could, or a millionaire or lottery winner could do that. So uh, it just takes someone to do that, to put a, some small uh, uh, telescopes in space to look, and we could greatly speed up this search with that. It would, they would fill in the gaps that, that are hard to spot with the ones on the ground. And we could do that either as a, a near alert, an early alert, or we could do it as uh, um, the two ways of doing it. The, the, there's one place you would put it if you're searching for asteroids and you want to spot them, any asteroid, two, two days before impact. And there's other places you would put it if you want to complete the search in a, a decade, and nearly, as nearly as, as quickly as possible, as much as possible find most of them. So we may do that, as especially as you get more people launching things in space. But meanwhile, your risk is very, very small. So um, if you click here, it's far less scary than lightning, and even being hit by a hailstone, then uh, it's and killed by hailstone. Very few people are, ever, are killed by hailstones, but it does happen. And um, like for instance, in the year 2000, a pizza worker in the United States was killed by a hailstone. He was a little bit foolish. His uh, car was being hit by huge hailstones that were damaging it. So he ran out to his car and drove it out of the hail. And then when he got out of his car and he ran back indoors, he was killed by a hailstone. I mean, it's pretty silly seeing hailstones denting your car and running out into it. But I suppose you don't think, don't realise how dangerous hailstones can be. So they, that is only if you have really, really huge hailstones, which is extremely rare, big enough to be denting your car, then you can be killed by that but only one person in the United States since 2000, in the year 2000. So that's quite rare. But it's not nearly as rare as being hit by an asteroid. And as for the big ones, we found um, nearly all the big ones now. And the, we, we, the, we found all the ones of 10 kilometers and larger. And 
that do regular fire bites of earth. Maybe I'll do a separate thing about that, but really it's pretty much retired, the big ones. And the main focus is on smaller ones. The And we find we even uh, something like this 2010 GT37, we're pretty certain to spot something like that even a year in advance in that very remote chance. But the, they're quite difficult to, it's difficult for them to hide. If you go back to this image, then the um, if if it's if it's threatening to Earth, then um, it would very likely have been seen by now, it, because they've been looking so intently for the last ten years for something as big as that. There must be very very few of those left, and the the main way that they could be hidden for so long is that if they are in an, an orbit that's almost the same as Earth, and it's just moving very very slowly relative to Earth then it could have been hidden behind the sun for the last 10 years. And if it's in such an orbit like that, then eventually as it comes out beyond the sun, then all of our telescopes would spot it. You know, once once it gets that, once it starts getting anywhere close, and it would take ages to get close to Earth. And, and if we did find a big one that was coming close to Earth, then, uh, say this one kilometre like this one, then it's very unlikely it's actually going to hit. Most likely it's going to do a flyby. And then the most likely time for hit would be decades into the future. And most likely, like this 1950 GD37, no, 1950 DA, I'm just getting mi mixed my two asteroids together, and this one, 2880, click on this one, then it's 8300 to 1. That means we expect it to miss even in, even in uh, 2800, uh, uh, 2880 which is, uh, well, we're now year two, 2000, we're now year 2000, you're talking about eight, eight centuries into the future, more than eight centuries. Surely we'll find it easy enough to deflect it by then. So the we may find, it's it's actually, the chances are we don't find any more, and this is a, the only one, because we found 95% of the ones above uh, one kilometer already, and out of those well over 900, then uh, only one was has this possibility of hitting centuries into the future. And the remaining few dozen, a couple of dozen or whatever it is, it's extremely unlikely that any of those um, end up being in the risk list and having a risk even centuries into the future. So we have pretty much retired the risk from these, these, these large ones. And, um, and then you've got the big 10 kilometer ones, and we know all of those. In fact, the largest one that we don't know is most likely about three and a half kilometers, uh, which is large enough to have significant global effects on the weather uh, for a while, but it's not, it's not, um, and we don't expect that one like that big to hit, and it's not going to, not massive, we, no mass extinction thing or anything like that. And the, um, and if we had, and if we had something like this that was going to hit, then we would know exactly where it's going to hit. But even if it was a near future, which is extremely, extremely, extremely unlikely, and if we're tracking it, then we just um, evacuate that region, and it'll create a small crater, uh, not very big compared to the size of the Earth, but big enough. To, if worst case, you have to evacuate London, and you have windows blown out all over England, and people have to keep away from them. <coughs> That's not very likely. I mean, it's, it's extraordinarily unlikely. And, and, and given decades and centuries then we can even we can easily uh, deflect an, an object like that and as for the large the large comets then they we get lots of comets go past the solar system they go past the inner solar system every year but the solar system is so vast that these comets they typically fly past um, further away than the sun and that's a vast 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 distance away and the closest any long period comet has got is uh, six times the distance of the moon, I think it was, and that was Lexel's comet in 1770. That's very far away still. If you were tra travelling at the speed that, that fast enough to go around the world in 24 hours, then you're talking about weeks of travel, I think more than a month of travel to get to that distance away that that comet passed by. It's a vast, vast distance away. So it's um, very unlikely that, and and it's very unlikely, and, and that one was 
flew during a flyby of Jupiter first, then it flew past, then it flew past Earth at that great, past Earth at that great distance, flew by Jupiter again. And that particular comet has probably been ejected from our solar system by its second flyby of Jupiter, because it hasn't been seen since then. So, uh, yeah. So, so, uh, so, you, you, uh, it's really, it's, it's worth doing it because there's so many people on the Earth. And especially the small ones. And if you've got billions of people, if you can save the life of even 14 people in a hamlet in Mexico by just looking very carefully at the sky and making sure that you can see it in advance, that's well worth doing. And uh, and in the very remote chance that it's something a bit bigger, then we're looking at the sky and we we'll see it, and then we can, and then we can deflect it. But actually, the chance if the if the uh, Egyptians had developed an asteroid detection telescope, and I just, I mean, obviously they wouldn't build it on top of the pyramids, but just suppose that they, just just for a kind of mean thing, put it on top of the pyramid. And if it had been sitting there on top of the Great Pyramid of Cheops ever since then, um, which was, um, then it, it, that was, they, they would, they would uh, and they weren't very far away. And the Egyptians, they were pretty advanced. They needed a little bit more mass. They needed, uh, uh, in terms of actual numbers of ideas, they weren't very far away from the Industrial Revolution, really. You can imagine alternative history where some very clever Egyptian thinks of some of the key the key things that led to our Industrial Revolution, and then they might have built the telescopes back then, and and then they'd have been just sitting waiting there, and and then they wouldn't have they would still be waiting for the first city killer, and if they had built uh, if they had rockets waiting to launch into space to deflect them. They'd still be sitting there, unused in their silos, waiting to be fired into space to deflect something. So, you're, you're not really talking about a likely thing to happen, but it is, uh, and I don't think we should actually build the deflection system until I think our priority, unless you had vast amounts of money to spend on it, I think our priority is to look for these things and look and look and look. And then once we've got them all mapped, then we will know. And we'll know even if there's a small one of 20 metres across, then we will know. Uh, whether there's a, a risk, and we can deflect even the big comets. We can deflect them with uh, the various ways to do it. The one of the easiest is using an infrared laser array. If you build a really big one, but it'd be worth it. If you if you thought there was a significant risk from a comet, then uh, and it's got a dual purpose. It can also be used to fire little spacecraft, um, like solar sail spacecraft, at um, not far off the speed of uh, tenth of the speed of light. Fraction, large fraction of the speed of light out towards other stars and also a little bit slower uh, you could get to Pluto in a couple of days or something and just do a flyby and take a few images as it flies past and um, so there's quite a lot of interest in the big through Starshot wants to make these uh, infrared lasers um, it would be a whole kind of vast field covered in lasers all pointing in the same direction and all infrared lasers, and they would, for a moment, use a vast amount of um, energy, and they would store it, and then store it all up, and then just uh, release all that energy in a few minutes. And during those few minutes, the lasers would be able to survive those few minutes. If you kept them going, they'd be too hot, and it, would, and it probably wouldn't survive for very long. So it just gathers a lot of energy, and then it releases all the energy in three minutes. And this boosts your little spacecraft flying off. Well, if you had a car coming uh, uh, and then it goes close quite very fast to somewhere else in the, in the solar system, then you can do it again and again. And if if we do build this, and there are some people who are working on the possibilities, of a billionaire who's funding this and who's looking into maybe possibly building this, and other people in, interested, if we ever do build this thing, then it we the same thing can fire little spacecraft. If you do these little shots every day, a few minutes, firing at a very distant comet as it comes in, then with two years warning, then those little shots, those tiny little pulses of infrared, but it's enough to uh, to actually move it far enough so you can make sure that it misses Earth with just two years of notice, even for quite a big comet. So we do have that prospect of even deflecting big comets. There are other ways of doing it as well, but the other ways mainly involve sending a mission to go out to the comet, but it's very difficult for comets because they're going very fast. And uh, but this lets you do it from the Earth, just firing a laser towards it, or you could have a laser array in orbit around Earth. 
Now, of, I mean, of course, there's a lot of, you need a lot of care, especially if it's on the Earth, then that's rather safe because there's no way that you can actually point it towards Earth. You can only point it in space. So that would show that your intentions are completely peaceful and it can't be used in any way to harm anyone. And so that would be uh, uh, quite a good quite a good thing. I mean, I suppose possibly satellites, but I mean, they have to... They have to uh, it's, it's going to need a little bit of care to make sure everyone knows it's peaceful and it's not to dumb um, satellites. But that's uh, that's something some some people are, are are doing. They're working on on this, and maybe someday we will be able to deflect even the very large comets relatively easily. But they, they're 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 not a risk at the moment because there's so few of them. And they fly past typically further away than the sun. <coughs> 